What's up? So, welcome to my video. I know you are probably here because maybe you are curious into getting into film photography, which is what this video is about. So, the time I'm making this video, I've been doing film photography for about a year now, but I already had some uh, photography experience beforehand. I've been shooting with the DSLR before fully investing into film photography. It was a slow transition from digital to film photography. I started off with these $20 point and shoot film cameras. Um, let me just show you one. So something like this. Uh, I started off with a point and shoot film camera. Um, during my photo shoots, I would always bring a point and shoot film camera just so I can take like uh, candid shots on film. There's something beautiful about it, like this whole nostalgic, this whole like retro look to it, like really attracts my eyes. Now, don't get me wrong, I still shoot on digital. I mean, I have this mirrorless camera with me that's recording me right now. It's just that on this YouTube channel and one of my Instagram page, it's strictly all about film photography. But anyways, yeah, so back when I was uh, shooting on, on a digital camera, I've always try to edit my photos in a way that they would look like vintage in a sense like I would add these like grain or like this um, dust overlay on Photoshop and I was never really like satisfied with how I edited these photos because no matter what like there's no way you can really make your digital photos look filmy so my goal in this video is to share you my experience that I have shooting on film for one year now. From photographer to photographer, hopefully you can learn something out of this video. So where did I start? It started off when I was looking into Kijiji, it's a, it's like a Canadian version of Craigslist and I was looking for a Nikon film camera and I came across this guy that was selling a Nikon F50 and I started with a Nikon F50 and I did one photo shoot with my friend Michaela taking on a Nikon F50 and a roll of Kodak Portra 400. At that shoot I was a little bit sort of like nervous because it was like my first time shooting on an automatic film SLR but everything turned out great. So shortly after that shoot I I wanted to upgrade to a better film camera and so I sold my Nikon F50 and I bought the Nikon F5. Now if you're someone who's just starting into film photography like I am, the best way to go about it is you can just go to eBay, Craigslist or Kijiji, wherever you can or Facebook Marketplace and you can just buy yourself like an automatic point and shoot film camera for less than $20. You can even find one that's 5 or $10 and like in a good condition. But what's even better is that if you're a Nikon or a Canon shooter, I'm not sure about other camera brands, but if you're a Nikon or a Canon DSLR shooter and you already have all these collection of lenses, why not look into a film SLR that has the same mount? For example, like this camera that I have with me. Um, so this 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens that I have on this camera, I was shooting the Nikon D500 at the time. So this lens that I've been using that digital camera is now on my Nikon F5. And that's like the cool thing about Nikon, which I know Canon has as well, is that the DSLRs and the film SLRs have the same mount. So like you can put on a, like a modern lens on an old SLR film camera and it will still work. However, there may be some restrictions where like the autofocusing may not work. Obviously, like some, some film cameras are like just fully mechanical or fully manual, so you have to do the manual focusing yourself. But the point I'm trying to say is that if you have all these glasses that already exist in your shelf somewhere, why not look into a film SLR that has the same mount as your DSLR? And you can start from there. And I'm pretty sure you can find automatic film SLRs, cameras like that um, for way less than $100. Um, you can start with those. And if you're just a little curious on how much I got this uh, Nikon F5, I've mentioned this in a video before. This Nikon F5, the body I got for $300, which is a steal because literally the price of film cameras nowadays are actually increasing. So I last I checked when I went to eBay a couple days ago and I checked the price of the F5, it was around 400 to 500 And I'm talking about Canadian dollars. But yeah, the film prices is going up, so get one while you can, while the prices are still cheap. So the film stocks that I recommend for starters is if you're someone who's into this warm type of tones, I would recommend the Kodak Go 200 and or the Kodak Ultramax 400. Now the difference between the two is the 200 and the 400 are basically the ISO speeds. So yeah, Kodak Go 200 and the Ultramax 400, they're the cheaper films that you can get, like especially if you're just starting out or like if you're on a budget to try out some films. They're really cheap but you know they give out amazing colors now if you're someone who's into like a cooler tone 
I would recommend going for the Fuji Superior 400. Now, to be honest, I don't really have a lot of shooting experience with the Fuji Superior 400. I've only tried it out on this one photo shoot that I had before. At that shoot, I actually ran out of Kodak films. Luckily, this other photographer that was present at that shoot, he brought extra rolls of Superior 400. So he gave them to me so I can continue shooting. And I was surprised with how amazing the colors turned out for the Superior 400. And mind you, the photos at that time when I was shooting the Superior 400, they were indoors and the lighting were artificial lighting. There wasn't really any, you know, natural lighting coming through the windows. It was all artificial lighting. But I was still surprised with how amazing the photos looked. You will notice that there are like some greenish tone in the shadows when you're shooting the Superior 400. It's it's really, it's very common for, for the Superiors. So shout out to Isaiah for bringing those extra rolls of Fuji. Finally got to experience how the Fuji colors look. So yeah, Kodak Gold 200, Ultra Max 400, and the Fuji Superior 400. They will run you between four to six dollars per roll depending on where you're from and depending on how many exposures each roll has so there's like 24 and 36 exposures and what i mean for for those of you who are not familiar with exposures it's basically shots like 24 exposures means you get 24 shots out of it 36 exposures means you get 36 shots out of it 24 is obviously going to be the cheaper one because less exposures less dollars if you want to go a little bit more professional um and i'm talking about like professional films kodak portrait 400 which is the film that i've been shooting a lot nowadays that one is however expensive though obviously professional is going to be more expensive unfortunately the the price for the portrait has increased here in canada it went from 16 dollars to 18 dollars per roll so you know that's something to keep in mind like again you have these uh cheaper budget alternatives which are still amazing enough now I know I've been speaking about automatic film SLRs and I am guilty for never using a manual film camera. Like I'm talking about fully mechanical film cameras where you have to manually wind the film yourself, you have to manually set the ISO, set the shutter speed yourself. Um, I'm guilty for never trying that out because I, I have other fellow photographers telling me that it's one of the best ways to like really really learn about film photography i'll eventually like get to that i'm probably gonna get like a nikon f3 or something like that in the future but for someone who's just starting out it's totally okay to just shoot automatic so how do i price my film photography now this is interesting because i've never done a brand shoot on film before i've done a brand shoot on on digital all, all the brand shoots that i've done are on digital uh, I've never done one on film yet so I have yet to do that in some time in the future and I will gladly share that with you but I have done some paid shoots with you know just one-on-one -on -one with another individual client you know like a person who's looking to build their portfolio or you know just have something to post on their on their socials so the way I do it is first I determine how many hours do they need or do they want or you can ask them like how many photos they are looking to get but for me, it's easier to just go for the hourly. So once you figure out how many hours your client wants to shoot, then you can determine how many rolls of films you can use. So for me, like a one hour shoot is good enough for a two roll of 36 exposure films or three rolls depending on your shooting style. But for me, like I, a two rolls of 36 exposure films is good enough for one hour. And then each hour increase is another two rolls of films. So next, once you determine how many rolls of films that you're going to be shooting, then you need to know how much it costs to get them developed. So for me, for example, it would cost $6 per roll to get my films developed. Um, and I'm talking about like going to a camera lab, like at your local camera lab and getting them to develop for you, unless you can develop them yourself. But for me, I just let the camera lab do all the developing. And then I scan the photos myself because I have my own scanner. I have the uh, Epson V600 a flatbed scanner and that scans both the 35 millimeter and the medium format films. However, if you don't have a scanner, that's fine. You can also get the camera labs to scan it for you, but that's gonna cost extra dollars depending on 
how big the file size you're gonna scan them with so you have to add that into your pricing and then lastly how much it costs to edit the photos obviously after you get the photos scanned you're not gonna give the photos right away to your client you're obviously gonna need to edit and do some retouching and do some color correction so in total it should be the cost of films plus the cost of getting them developed plus scanning which is optional plus the cost of of editing slash retouching and then the total will be your price to your clients so where did I find my models now Instagram is like the only place I've really found all these people Instagram is literally the biggest networking hub for creators like if you're looking for models hairstylists makeup artists and other photographers Instagram is the place for it and it's also the same place where people find me all the page shoes I've done where, you know, through Instagram, like people find me and they just contact me there and yeah. One of the brand shoes that I've done uh, was with Vitae Apparel. Um, they are a swimwear slash fitness clothing apparel based in Vancouver. There's this photo that I posted of one of my friends. She was wearing their products um, and then I tagged them on it. And then surprisingly, I think a few days later, they the brand messaged me on Instagram, like they literally DM me and I did end up working with them. So that was like, I thought a really, really like cool experience. Now, obviously like the shoot that I've done with Vitae Apparel, this was like before I was doing film photography. You know, I was still shooting on my DSLR. Uh, I did took like a couple snapshots there on a point of shoot film camera. But like I was trying to say is that, you know, even if you don't have a website, Instagram is also a place where brands can reach you. Like what Vitae Apparel did, like they reached out to me and they told me that they want to work with me. And yeah, that is all I have to share with you in my first year as a film photographer. You know, everything I've learned, all my experiences, that is all I have to share with you for today. And yeah, leave a like if you found this video useful, if you found this video valuable, uh, leave a like. Um, drop a comment um, if you have something to share as well with your experience as a photographer, both film and digital, doesn't matter. You know, something that I can probably learn from you as well or, you know, other people who are watching this video that want to learn from. You know, feel free to drop a comment on your experience and what, whatever you learn. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. And also here's my Instagram page if you want to see more of my film photography work. And yeah, I'll see you later. Peace.